ears for revelation, right? Ears to hear what God says. Check this out. Um, this is just interesting. Interesting. Um, on the seventh, on the sixth day, um, you know that God rested. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image and the likeness of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. All right. Male and female. Uh, let's go to chapter 2. Um, and verse 5, where no plant of the field was yet in the earth, no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not yet caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. All right. Then verse 7, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of the spirit of life, and man became a living being. Right? Uh, the King James says, a soul. All right. Okay. Now, um, now we know what this man um, who is called. We call him Adam, right? Adam. I don't know if you guys ever like read the Bible, but it's sometimes very often different to the way that we've learned it. Okay, so Adam. This is a very interesting thing because so often we think Adam means one man. And Adam does not mean one man. If you go to Genesis chapter 5, verse, verse 1, This is the book of the generations of the offspring of Adam. When God created man, He made him in the likeness of God and created them male and female and blessed them and named them Adam Adam is not one guy Adam is a group of people Adam is the first man okay Adam is the first man and men, male or female, find their identity in Adam. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's teaching, stick with me, it's going to be good. Alright? Um, male and female were both called Adam. Alright? So, let's go back to Genesis chapter 2. And just a reminder, then the Lord God, verse 7, formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Yo, this stuff is my favorite stuff to speak about. So, there's three components, two components that came together in order to make man. One was dust, and one was spirit. And when the combination of the two came together, we have the soul. Okay? So, I remember explaining it this way. We have dust. What part of that is you? It's your body. Then you have spirit. And when the two come together, okay, here's your spirit, and the two come together is soul. Okay, so we have body, spirit, and soul. This is Adam. Alright? So, dust, spirit, soul. The soul is your is your consciousness. The soul is how um, is how we you know how we operate. Um, it's our decisions. It's everything that we do and how we are constantly shaped and formed. It's this. Adam became a living soul. Right. 
Okay, so they were all called Adam. Now we know Adam, Adam fell. Okay, so let's quickly go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 45. Let's read in the King James. So it's written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam who has made a quickening spirit. How about, okay, um, now I'm switching back to the, the Amplified. It's not the spiritual life which came first but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from out of the earth, made of dust, earthly minded. The second man is the Lord from out of heaven. Now listen to the words. He says the first man is dust. Right? Then he speaks about a second man. But I thought there was, how many men are there? One, two, three, four, five. How many men? There's tons. There's lots of people. (laughs) Right? But to God, there's only two kinds of men. And he says, the second man is the Lord from out of heaven. So Jesus becomes the second man. He becomes the second man, right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ears for revelation. I will hear what the Spirit says. This is practical. Now those who are made of the dust are like him who was made from the dust. Who's that? Adam. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven heavenly minded just as we have borne the image of the man of dust so let us also bear the image of the man of heaven this is incredible you know so so many people just say no we we um everyone is the image of god yes this is interesting so genesis 1 26 27 says Um, And God said, let us make man in our image. One man is this image. Another man is this image. The first man is the image. It says there, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust. So let us also now bear the image of the man of heaven. Now there's a second man involved. Today, you're either one or two. (laughs) Right? Okay. So he says here, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall we, and let us bear the image of of the man of heaven. Just like okay, so we mentioned it last week. It's going to get easier now. Just as we have born. Tenses. What kind of tense is that? Past tense. So we understand 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, the new has come, the old has passed away. You are a new creature. You get up there in the, in the mirror, what do you see? You're a new creature. You're a new creation. The old has passed away. Now we understand that our new, our new identity might be invisible. Woo. But it is you know, we, anyways, we're putting on this new creature. We are putting on this new image, the man of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so 
So the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, he says here, go, go back a couple of scriptures. 45. Okay. The first man, King James it for me. Okay. The first man was made a living soul. So, this, his nature is reflected in, in the soul reality. Then, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. There is a difference between spirit and soul. Where most men, or well, their identity is the soul, is who they are. Jesus appeared in an Adam form, <laughs> became the last Adam, a living soul, ended that nature and became a quickening spirit. <laughs> Where his nature is no longer soul, his nature is spirit. Yes, this is good. His nature is spirit, it is not soul. We only understand this now, but we're going on to this. Amen. All right. So, if we go to if we go to John, chapter three. Jesus said, verse five, "I solemnly tell you, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot ever enter into the kingdom. What is born of the flesh is flesh." And what is born of the physical is physical. But what is born of the Spirit is Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Jesus goes on and says in John 4, You don't know who you're serving. Right? He says, God is a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit. There must be an understanding of who we are and our nature in order to approach God. So God is spirit. So now, if I look at you, you have a physical nature, right? You were born of flesh. You are born, you have a mom and dad. I look like my mom and my dad. You can see I, that's where I come from. But it's such a fascinating statement because Jesus goes on to say, He says, What is born of the flesh is flesh. So it's obvious. What is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Is Spirit. Okay, now I'm speaking to your identity. Are you spiritual? Or are you spirit? Hey? Are we spiritual? Or are we spirit? Are we flesh that is spiritual? Or are we spirit? You are spirit. You are spirit. Just as you have borne the image of the man of dust, the natural, the physical, let us now also bear the image of the man of heaven. Amen. Let us put on this nature, which is spirit, which is driven by spirit. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? Yes, you are hearing what I'm saying. We need a bold the identity, the understanding of who you are and what you're walking in. Amen. That you are more, that you are not, I've said this a hundred times in this church, but you are not just a normal human being. You are not just a human being. You are more than a human being. You are born of God, the most intelligent being in the universe. You are spirit. Just let that sink in a little bit. And think about it. Because if we're going to go forward from here, 
We need to understand a little bit about who we are in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. So remember the invitation. Come run with me. Come learn with me. Come. Come away with me. It's going to be wild. It's going to be great. It's going to be full of me. But we can't go with an old mindset. We can't step into the spirit, into the spirit of life with an Adam mentality. We can't come up with a, with, a, with a programmed and conditioned by the way Adam was. We have to step out. We have to believe for more. We have to uh, understand our inheritance in Christ Jesus. Yeah, I am spirit. I am spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit. So, hmm, Philippians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 5. Let the same attitude and purpose, humble mind, be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, did not think his equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or attained. But it says, he stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity to assume the guise of a servant in that he became like man and was born a human being. So Adam, so Jesus comes and he steps in and he becomes Adam. Yes. Jesus strips himself from this whole, he's above all kind of thing. He says he takes it off, although being essentially one with God, he strips it off and he, he's born a human being. He's born Adam. God, who said, let's make man in our image, says, okay, now we're going to make God in man's image. <laughs> I think it's phenomenal. So he goes from, he strips down everything he is, and he becomes a little Adam. Yes, it's exciting me. And he goes and he fulfills all this, this things and he, he um, by obedience he goes through the death of the cross and he is born anew and he becomes born of the Spirit. Phew, this gets me. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to write that down because there is an important thing that we have to emphasize. Verse, verse 8. After he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself and carried his obedience to the extreme of death and the death of the cross. And then verse 9. Therefore, because he, my Jesus, stooped so low, God has highly exalted and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. And we remember, remember what it is. My son. <laughs> my son. My son. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, the Son of God. Christ Jesus, the Son. Okay. So Jesus comes and appears as a soul. As a living soul. 1 Corinthians 15. A lot of Bible reading, but now it's going to get good. Uh, we're going to start with verse 42 and go back into verse 45 and you're going to understand 1 Corinthians 15 in a new way verse 42 so it is with the resurrection of the dead the body that is sown and decays okay speaking about um, a seed right um that is sown is perishable and decays, but the, the body that is resurrected is imperishable. Now, remember Jesus was sown as a body. 
It is sown in dishonor and humiliation. Speaking about Christ, how he died. It is raised in honor and glory. It is sown in infirmity and weakness. It is resurrected in strength and endued with power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a supernatural body. Now, he says, there is a physical body. There is a spiritual body. Keep listening. So, the first Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The last Adam is Jesus. The first Adam became a living being, Adam. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Wow. Okay. Now we prayed today, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read it slowly. Ephesians 1 verse 19. read it real slow. Paul says, so that you, okay, so see that finger pointed to you personally, that you can know and understand, wow, what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, we're going too fast almost, next, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Stop. Go back to verse 19 again. So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe? All right, now this is interesting. Just we're gonna get back to that scripture. Now, we quoted 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. There's three parts of us, right? Spirit, soul, and body. You see it there. Um, all right, body, let's just do it here. Okay, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Are you a new creature? Yes. yes. When you look at yourself in the mirror and the body, what is the body telling you? You're not a new creature. <laughs> You're an old creature. <laughs> no, this is something hasn't changed here. Your soul is ever being renewed. Something happened here. Your new creature is spirit. Amen. And this is where we now get our identity from. Not the soul. The spirit. The spirit is the new creature. Okay? So something didn't change here yet. Something didn't change here yet. It's an ongoing change. Something changed here. And that... By nature, when you are born of God, you are now spirit. Amen. So, we'll come back to Ephesians 1, Romans 8, 29. Let's rub it in. Romans 8, verse 29. For those... For those whom he foreknew of, whom he was aware of, loved beforehand, he destined from when? What did he say in the beginning? Let us make mankind in after our image. And then he made Adam. And then before, uh, before the true image came, God became Adam. And then after God became Adam, 
Adam became God. And that's the thing. From the beginning, he destined to be molded um, into his image of his son and share his likeness. Okay, I'll quote it now. Look at me. For those of whom he foreknew, of he was aware of. Me, you, Anthony, you. You know that the Lord knew you beforehand. And he didn't just know you. He destined something for you. You know what he destined you for? He destined you to be molded into the image of his son. Wow! And share his likeness. That Christ might become the firstborn amongst many brothers. So now we don't have, we, we know brothers in Adam. But now we become brothers of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's so good. His nature is that of spirit. He physically died to end the nature of Adam, right? Becoming the last Adam. To bring forth a new people, a new kind of people. Like uh, Peter says, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That he saw beforehand, long before. And he destined them to be molded into the image of his son, that Christ become the firstborn amongst many brothers. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> You're the many, Jason. <laughs> okay. We, we're getting there. Nearly finished. Just enjoy this stuff. Just enjoy this. So for God loved, for God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Okay, excuse me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. So here comes Jesus, steps down, is born a, a, a child, a, a baby. And then so Isaiah chapter 9 says, Unto us a child is born, but a son is given. The son given is Christ given on the cross. This is my son given. So he becomes, he's on the cross as he's hanging there. He is God's only son. Given. Given. God's only son is given on the cross. Now we read in 1 Corinthians 15, it is sown a natural seed. Right? It is raised a supernatural. It is sown physical, it is raised spiritual. So at what point did Jesus become the firstborn and not the only one? Because when I give my life to Christ and I say, and now I'm a child of God. Jesus, uh, Mary is not my mom. Mary is not my mother. So in John 3, Nicodemus says, his response to, to Jesus is, how can I be born again? Must I go back into my mom's womb? Right? Good question though. And that's when he responds, he says, hey, what is born of spirit is spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh. You've had the flesh nature. I'm inviting you to have the spirit nature. Become born of the spirit. So when Jesus, when Jesus becomes the firstborn, is when he ends Adam. So he dies as Adam. And he goes into the grave, into the ground. And when he wake, gets up, he steps out as the firstborn. And he steps out as the firstborn of many brothers. And he steps out as the firstborn from amongst the dead. And he steps out as a resurrected life, a spirit life. That is our portion. It's crazy. We're going to preach supernatural stuff like this. We have to get something in our identity as the church. If we're going to go into the world or back in whatever, you have to realize, my goodness, you have a new nature. 
And although you see flesh, although you deal with soul, your new nature is spirit. It's who I am. I'm no longer a, a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I am walking in a new identity of who I am in Christ Jesus. Because He loved me. Jesus paid a price for me to end the, 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 the endemic nature that has failed. To bring a one that is more victorious in anything. All right? Do you know who you are? Do you really know the price that, 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 that Jesus has paid for you? The song says we are more than what we have become. We are more. We are more than that. All right. Two scriptures and we finished. Hebrews chapter 2. Probably one of my favorite passages of scripture. Hebrews 2. All right. Hebrews 2, quickly verse 9. We are able to see Jesus, who was ranked lower than the angels for a little while. Remember, he took on the nature of Adam, crowned with glory and honor because of his suffered death. In order, by the grace of God, he might experience death for every individual person. You don't need to experience death to walk in to the... To the the, the nature that Jesus has, has now made available. He experienced death for you. For it was an act worthy of God, fitting to the divine nature, that He for whose sake and by whom all things have their existence, in bringing many sons into glory, woo, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect. Say, I am a son of God. Oof. And then Romans, Romans 6, and then we, we're done. Verse 3. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Do you know what you do when you get baptized? You die. I always loved when we used to do the baptism. Sometimes I'd baptize like 100 to 200 people in a night. And my sermon was, okay, I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> and that's exactly what baptism is. You're, it's a sign of your death and resurrection. We are buried therefore with Him by baptism into death. So just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might live and behave in newness of life. Amen. If we have become one with Him by sharing His death, we shall be one with Him in sharing His resurrection. Amen. And we know that our old unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with Him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we may no longer be the slaves of sin. Alright. If you, if, you, if you hear what I'm saying, what the scripture is saying, sorry, I know it was a, a lot of scriptures and a lot of, a lot of teaching, but I'm giving it because we can, we, can, we can take a step further. We can increase our faith for I mean, imagine going to God as a son of God, you know, knowing who you are, your confidence in approaching the Father <laughs> as a son, walking in a nature that is not the, the worm, Adam life, but a Christ life. Yeah. We need it. We need it if we're going to, in our homes, you know, um, you know, Amongst our peers, amongst wherever our circle of influences, there's a difference there. You, you, you're, you, have, you have a different nature, Christ's nature. Know what you walk in. 
Know what you walk in. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is good. I am blessed. God is good to me. Not because I'm good, but because He's good. Yeah. I'm a son. Yeah. I'm a son of God. I have a new nature in Christ Jesus. What we're going to do is we're going to make this confession, all of us together. If you want to give your life to Christ right now, you make this prayer heartfelt and you can, you can, you can have salvation. You can be born again right now. So, 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 say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking my death, taking my sins, giving me your life giving me a resurrected life. Thank you that you saw me and that you loved me, yet you singled out me. I receive the sacrifice. I receive you into my heart. Come into my heart.